So maybe, uh, maybe you've noticed, but our, uh, our VBS decorations are still up, right? And uh, amazing week for Vacation Bible School. And we want to take some time today as a church, really just to, to celebrate the greatness of God. So we've got a lot of kids in this room, and some of them are up here up front, and they're actually going to share a little bit with us today um, kind of what happened during the week, and that's awesome. But not just to say this is just for kids, right? Because it's for us as adults as well. Um, There was a a guy by the name of Robert Fulgham, and in 1986, he wrote a little book. And that little book was called Everything That I Really Needed to Know, I Learned Where? Kindergarten. Anybody read that book? If you haven't read that book, it's actually a collection of essays. It's a phenomenal book to get a hold of. Because he stumbled onto something that's really, really true. See, as we grow as adults, we, we tend to get a little more sophisticated, right? We, we grow out of our kid years. But the truth is, that's not always a good thing. Because along with maturing and getting older with age, we also get a little more cynical, don't we? We also sometimes doubt more than we did when we were kids. We also have the ability to compartmentalize as adults really well. What I learn in my head, I don't practice in my life. I maybe put it off to the side and say, yeah, I know that's true, but... But you know what, Robert Fogham, he stumbled on some things. And here's some of the things that he he said, you know what, what what I really need to have in my life, I learned in kindergarten. And this is what he said, here's what I really learned. And he wrote a little poem that said, most of what I really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of graduate school mountain, but there's a sand pile of it in Sunday school and maybe vacation Bible school. And then I want you to just look at this list. Here's what he said he learned. Share everything and play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. And every mom said, amen, right? (laughs) Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. (laughs) Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some. And draw and paint and sing and dance. And play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. And last of all, he said, be aware of wonder. You know, you think about what would our world be like if we just practiced some of those things on that list. A second thing to ask yourself maybe as an adult this morning is, what on that list do you need to add to your week this week? Maybe it's a simple thing of just seeing others and being aware of wonder. Maybe it's just adding some warm cookies and cold milk sometime this week. It's so easy to forget or to lose those things that we learned when we're young. But it wasn't just Robert Fulgham who said that. You know, Jesus had a lot to say about that too, didn't he? In fact, Jesus said, In Matthew chapter 18, when someone asked him at the time, his disciples came to Jesus and they said, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? That's a good question. The disciples asked Jesus, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And you know what Jesus said? Not the theologians, not the pastors, not even adults. He called a little child to him, and he placed the child among them. And then Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you, now he's speaking to adults, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Jesus showed the importance of children, but he also invited us to have hearts that are humble and tender and actually believe 
what he says. Not to compartmentalize, not to know the truth in our head and it never gets to our heart, but to actually hear the words of Jesus and to practice them. And so that's what happened this week in VBS. Kids this week, and if you were watching, even the songs we sang this morning already, and they're going to sing a little bit more for us, they learned those songs. But they learned four really important lessons this last week. And they're up on the screen there. And I would invite you today and even this week to spend some time thinking about the fact that God loves you no matter what. No matter what, right? No matter your history, no matter your past, no matter your present, no matter your future. No matter if your bank account is full or your bank account is empty. No matter whether you feel on top of the world today or you walked in here thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get through another day. God loves you no matter what. He created you in his image. A simple truth that we can know in our head and move on in our day and not consider it. What difference would it make in your life this week if you woke up every day with the confidence that God loves you no matter what? Truth number two they learned is God is with you. Where? Everywhere. Everywhere. In your home, in your job, in your neighborhood, in your great moments, and in your dark moments. When life is wonderful, And when life is really complicated, God is with you everywhere. And it's Jesus who said, I came to give you life and give it to you abundantly. And then the third thing they learned is that God is in charge and God is stronger than anything, right? Stronger than anything. No matter what you face today, no matter what you face this week, God is stronger than that and he's in charge. Was there a moment maybe for you, maybe for me, where we kind of think that we're in charge? We kind of said, great, God, I appreciate you getting my life off to a start, but I've got it from here. Sometimes I can even look back in my life and see poor choices when that's what I said to God, consciously or subconsciously, God, I got it from here. And God said, no, 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 I'm in charge. I've given you my word. I've given you my spirit. I know what's best for you. You know, we have an enemy of our soul, don't we? And that's the biggest way he'll come after you is to just say to you, God doesn't really love you and he doesn't really have your best at heart. That's been his strategy from the beginning of time and it's still his strategy. So be on the lookout for that voice. Kids learn this week that God is in charge and is stronger than anything. And then they learn this last one, and this is important. God is surprising. You can't put God in a box. You can't take care of God and put him in that little spot that you want him to fit in. He's surprising. He's bigger than you think he is. And he wants to show up in our lives. And so they learn these four lessons. They paid attention to them. But remember what Jesus said. Unless you and I become like a child, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So I want to invite Melissa up. And while she's coming up, I just want to take a second. And if you volunteered for VBS this week in any way, shape, or form, you helped set up this room, you helped run VBS, or you don't know it yet, you're excited about helping clean up VBS... If you fit into any of those categories, would you just stand to your feet along with Melissa right now? And I just want to say thank you. Would you help me with that? Awesome. Melissa, thank you for all your hard work. Thanks for the team. Again, over 70 volunteers, 170 kids in here hearing the truth of Jesus. That's amazing. Melissa's going to, along with the help of some kids, she's going to share one of the songs that they learned this week, and then we also had a special guest this week in VBS, Adriana Simmons, who's a missionary in Thailand. She's going to come and share with us, and then we're going to actually hear a couple of songs and a couple of things that they learned this week, okay? So, 
And right before that, we're going to catch a quick slideshow to see what actually happened this week. So check this out of what happened this week in VBS. And you guys look for yourself in those pictures, okay? Good morning. I'm wonderful. Good to see you. God's love never fails and it lasts forever. Our God is great. Our God is great. My God is with me. Yes, He's with me wherever. Our God is great. Our God is great. He's an awesome God. Bigger than my wildest dreams. My humanity love.
worshipers, calling all the praises. I want everyone around the world to put your hands together right now because God and God alone is worthy of our praise. Amen. Here we go. Every praise. All right, we had an incredible week, so many fun things, fun memories, all the crazy is because we had a wacky Wednesday. This is hopefully this one works a little better. But um, we also had like 20 of our youth helping us this week, and they went straight from here to camp. So <laughs> they're pretty tired, but they're having a great time. So we are going to invite all the kids up here. And we're, I want you guys to come stand on stage. We're going to share with you a couple of the songs that we sang, some of the verses that we learned, um, and just some of the, invite you into our incredible week. So any of you kids over here, come on up, okay? All right. Sing any one to love, you guys. Are you ready? Okay. Sing loud because you guys know these songs really well. God's love never fails and it lasts forever. Our God is great. Our God is great. My God is with me. Yes, He's with me. right here okay so they did fantastic and if you can imagine like quadrupling this number that's what we had in here this week and it was amazing the energy it was so incredible we took out all the chairs and the kids just danced and sang at the top of their lungs and just it was so cool to see them praising God 
Um, so we're going to share with you some of our Bible points that we learned and some of the memory verses that they memorized this week. And each one of these animals was a way for us to remember. So they learned something about that animal that helped us to remember the point about God. So Finley. Do I see Finley somewhere? Oh, he's not here. Okay. So does someone want to do our first day one Bible point? No, Finley's right there. I see Finley. Come here, Finley. Finley, come here this way. Come toward me. You can listen to my voice. <laughs> He'll get to me eventually. Hi. All right, Finley, come here. You're going to tell us right here. I know. You're hearing the, the speaker. <laughs> From everywhere. Okay, what was our day one Bible point? God loves you no matter what. That's right. So we learned about our Gila monster, and then even though he's not a monster, God still loves him. And so that was our our point for the day, huh? All right, and then Sebastian's going to share with us our verse for day one. Your unfailing love will last forever, Psalm 89.2. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Finley, you can go back up. Okay. Finley, you can come back up here. All right, and then day two, we had Miley, the roadrunner, who runs pretty fast for a bird, right, you guys? We learned that. Okay, so I have Grace and Wesley. My Grace. There's a lot of Graces. Okay, they're going to tell us our Bible point for day two. Okay, God is with you everywhere. God is with you everywhere. Good job. Okay, and so Danny's going to share with us our verse for day two. Do you remember it? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. Awesome. All right, and then day three. You guys remember our animal? Well, we skipped day three because we only have vacation Bible school four days. And so day three was our coyote howl, and he taught us that God is in charge. And did anybody remember that verse from day three? Because some people were challenged to memorize it, but not everybody did because we didn't do it. Does anybody remember that one? I don't even remember it. Adam, did you know that one? God is in charge and stronger than anything. Oh, yeah, good job. Awesome. And our verse, I think, was in Psalms 147.5. I don't remember what the verse was. There it is right there. How about, Bree, do you want to say it for us? How great is our God, his power is absolute. Good job. All right, okay. And then day four, we had Rolo the armadillo, and we learned, yeah, the armadillo. He was pretty cool, huh? Very strong. All right, so Paisley, you're going to tell us our Bible point for... God is stronger than anything. Yeah, good job. And Jack's going to tell us our verse. That was the day we were able to share with the kids just the gospel message and how God conquered death. And so we learned... I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Romans 8.38. Good job. So we learned that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. And then day five was our jackrabbit. That's right. And we learned a lot of really cool facts about our jackrabbit. And so Sienna's going to tell us our Bible point for day five. God is surprising. That's right. Good job. And then Chloe is going to tell us our verse for day five. Come and see what our God has done, his power. Oh, no, what, what awesome miracles he performed for our people. Psalm 66.5. Good job. Awesome. And the cool thing is, every time we said any of those Bible points, what did you guys have to say? Oh, you can say it louder than that. What did you, God is surprising. Very cool. So, some of you will recognize the song we learned the song Awesome God from like back in the 80s. So <laughs> it was a flashback. Um, so we're going to sing Awesome God for you guys.
from heaven above with wisdom power All right, you guys are all going to come sit right down here on the floor. Pastor Phil's going to share with us a little bit more. And then we're going to sing another song for you guys in a little bit. I'll take that right here. Amen. They will be back in just a minute and share one more song with us. But really great job. Really great job. Don't miss what happened this week. Right? They spent a week listening to God worshiping, hiding God's word in their heart, and then walking it out and being obedient. Again, sometimes as adults, we make life really complicated, but that's still what God asks us to do. Listen to him and his word, hide his word in our heart, and walk that out in obedience to him. Hey, at this point in time, I want to invite Adriana to come up. Adriana is actually a missionary sent out from our church. And she had a chance this week, all week long, to stand and share with kids. In fact, you had a station you were teaching, right, during VBS? Yeah, I was right here on stage all day long. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We were, we were we doing had, videos. Uh, yeah, we had lunch at the end of the week, and I said, how, how many times did you go? And she said, oh, four, four times every day? Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Adriana, you're actually local from here, somewhere close here. Yeah, I grew up in Ephrata. Awesome. Right across the Yeah, and you may, some of you, if you go to church here, you know Adriana is one of our missionaries, and she was with us a little over a year ago. Yep. Yeah? Yep. And we prayed for her, and she moved off to? Thailand. Thailand. Okay? Thailand. She actually lives in Chiang Rai, Thailand. Yep. And she's back for a little bit this summer, seeing some family, back for a family wedding with some friends, and also just connecting with church. And what an amazing job. Thank you for giving one of the weeks back here in the States to us and to sharing with our kids. Yeah, no problem. It's been really fun connecting with everyone, and it's really great getting to know all the, the little kids and everything. So it's been wow. a pleasure. In Romans chapter 10, I just want to talk for a second of how it's going in Thailand and, and, and just, just to kind of connect on that. Romans chapter 10, the, the Bible says this, that the word of the Lord is near and all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how then can they call on one they haven't believed in? And how can they believe in one in whom they have not heard? And how, how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Your heart and desire is that your feet would be beautiful. As God has sent you to Thailand to share the good news of God's word. How's that going? Yeah. So I got sent to Thailand um, over a year ago now, and our ministry is really focused on seeing unreached people groups presented with the Bible and come to believe in Jesus. And not only just seeing that happen, but to see a church planting movement move throughout those unreached people groups so that they become reached. 
And um, just in Thailand alone, there's around 130 different people groups, and I believe around 90 of those are still unreached. And that means that they have no access to the gospel at all. It's not in their language. There's probably not a written version of it in their language at all. Um, and it's just not, it's not like America here where we have God as our foundation when the, all of the rules and everything about the country were written. It was based on biblical concepts, but that's not the case there at all. It's a lot of Buddhism and spirit worship. There's idols everywhere, um, monks and all those things. And so it's very distant. And without God, without Christ in their community, there's just a lot of brokenness and hurt and pain. And they don't know why. They don't know right from wrong in a lot of situations. But when we can go in with the gospel and we can present that to them and they believe, then you get to see lives transformed and cultures transformed. And so that's really what we want to see um, I'm currently working with the Tyla people group. That's the team I'm on as an intern. My first year was a lot of learning language, learning Bible stories, learning strategy, tactics, all of those different things. Um, and then our other team at, at our office is the Lahu team, and they've actually seen almost all of the Lahu people in Lao reached and have now had to move on to Myanmar and are doing um, a drug rehab as part of their platform there and all sorts of great things there. Um, but as I continue, I hope to um, continue with the Tyler team and get to practice more and more as I'm starting to be able to speak and share the gospel in, in Thai. And, um, but then eventually, I'd like to become the next leader and try and go after another people group. And so right now, I'm at the beginning stages of studying the Tycoon people, um, another close relative of the Tyler, so it'd be an easy transition. Um, but at this point, they're completely unengaged as well. So they're not only just an unreached people group, but they're an unengaged unreached people group, meaning there's no one currently in the world trying to share the gospel with them. So there's zero access to it at all And how many people are going unsaved. And so we just want to get the gospel to them. It's incredible for us to think about sometimes, right? Because we all got up this morning and within a short distance of our homes, we, we drove to a church like this, right? And this yeah. isn't the only church in this town. There, there's quite a few churches in this town, but imagine living in a place, imagine living in a place, kids, where you had no opportunity to go to church or someone telling you about Jesus or telling you about God's love. All of this that happened this week was to reach and engage kids. Yeah. And that's what you're doing in, in Thailand. You're living with a, a group of people who are praying and asking God to give you the opportunity to share the truth of God's word. You said 130 people groups there that don't have access to God's word, yeah. don't have it written in their language. You and I can open our Bibles and we can read it. We have multiple Bibles around us. What an amazing thing to do that. Something as you and I talked, unengaged, unreached, right? That, that literally means 2%, less than 2% of the people group know the truth about God's word, and your goal is to move that group beyond 2%. Yeah. What happens at that point in time? So when we go out, we want to try and share with a family, especially get people in a group when, when we're sharing with them so that it's not just a single person because they're likely going to be isolated and, and really persecuted heavily um, if it's a single. So we want to have families and then get them to not only believe but then become disciple makers as well. So we're training them to train other people to go out and share and when we get to that 2% of, an, of the people group, at that point, then they can kind of take ownership of it themselves. There's enough people within them that they can say, hey, I want to get all of my family, all my friends, all of my people to know the word of God, to know Jesus. And so they, they have studied in it that, that 2%, which seems like not very much, right? But just at that 2% is where it starts to kind of take fire on its own and continue to spread. And then us pioneer um, folks, the missionaries can kind of back out and let that go and let that take root as their own religion, as their own God, as their own practices, because we really don't want it to be dependent on us as the foreigner. We want them to own it and to understand it and to have the heart for their own people. Incredible. Incredible. I want you to stop just for a second, and I want you to think about who brought the gospel to you. Who did God send in your life to tell you about Jesus, to tell me about Jesus? Who maybe shared with you the first time out of God's word? You know, we, we think about that and we stop and we say, God, thank you for sending someone to tell me about Jesus. Now, here's another question to think about. Who is God sending you to to tell them about Jesus? 
you've had to move to another country because you were part of a team. You've had to learn another yeah. language, yeah. get used to a different kind of food, yeah. right? <laughs> All kinds of things. You stepped away from family and friends and culture that you know, and you're learning a new culture for the opportunity to share the truth of God's word with people who haven't heard. Yeah. Amazing. Now you're out there, full-time paid job, right? No. <laughs> No, absolutely not, right? If you're it's familiar how with many missions, think that. <laughs> right? Yeah, it must be great and glamorous and amazing. And yeah. no, you, you've had to raise money. And one of the cool things is our church has been a part of that and been a part of helping you live. And because the truth is you, you can't work. You can't get a paying job in Thailand. You're there on a different kind of visa. Right. And your full-time job is to learn a language and a culture, build friendships and share the truth of Jesus. Right. And so we get the opportunity as a church to come alongside you and support you. Now, it's a little tricky sometimes for missionaries to talk about that because they've got to go out and raise their support. But as you and I had lunch, you've shared that you need to raise some additional support. Yeah. Um, so just as I continue on, the first year, like I said, was a lot of just being an intern and learning language, learning and studying a lot. But as I continue, and it's going to be at least two years before I come back to the States, that's kind of the agreement at this point, and in those two years, as I try and continue pursuing another people group, start kind of learning more of how to build my own team, I'm going to have more um, expenses related with that. At some point, there's going to be maybe other teammates or locals that I'm going to start having to, to pay to help me or buying materials or transferring materials into another language. And so there's just, as I get more and more into a leader, leadership position, there's going to be a lot more um, costs involved with that. Um, and then also just living things. I'm going to be needing a car, which thank you all the kids and VBS that have helped me with a huge chunk of getting um, money for a car. That's been awesome. And then um, so then car insurance and all of the visas. We're going to be traveling a lot more now. Right before I left, let the border to Laos finally opened up. And so a lot of our work um, for our people group was actually in Laos and Myanmar to the north. And so that'll be every time... It's 50 or more dollars for a visa in and out. So just all of those things add up a lot. And so, yeah, I'm probably having to increase like 30% or so. Here, here's before. what I want to invite us to do. Okay, one, I want you to know that we as a church, 10% of all the money that comes into our offering here goes into missions, and we send that out. But I also want to invite you as an individual or a family to, to step into Adriana's life. She has a table out in the lobby. And one, step number one for a lot of us is you just need to Google where is Thailand, right? That's probably the first thing we need to learn. Right? You mentioned Laos and Myanmar and a whole part of the world that, yeah, we're not exactly sure where that is, but look that up. The second thing would be this. What would it look like for you to help support Adriana? I know for my wife and I, we've got a couple of missionaries that we support personally. We pray for them. We give to them. And I want to be excited about what they're doing. For a lot of us in this room, we may never go to Thailand. We may never go into Laos or Myanmar and share the gospel, but we get the opportunity to pray with and even financially support Adriana. We as a church have a part of that, but she makes up a team of a lot of individuals and churches. So maybe it's 10 bucks a month. Maybe it's just a little bit to say, I want to be a part of your team. Adriana sends out an amazing newsletter. Get that newsletter. She'll send it to your email, and you can know what she's doing, and you can pray with her and for her. And what a cool thing someday for somebody from Laos, Myanmar, who came to know Jesus because of the work of Adrienne and her team, and you and I had a part of that, to say we prayed for you. We were able to give to the team that was working on that. So stop by her table today. Right, we've seen and we're celebrating how the gospel is going out here in kids in our church. But our church also wants to be a part of reaching the nations and the world. That's what God tells us to do. Adriana mentioned a car. A hey, really cool thing. These kids were told all week that in order to get around in ministry, Adriana needs to buy a car. And so they actually brought in their money. And kids raised $804 this week to help her raise a car. Right? Just Which two is awesome. days. Two days. Two days. Amazing. <laughs> Awesome. The car is roughly $10,000, right, that you're working on. Yeah. We as a church, out of our missions fund, are, are going to make up the difference on that, and we're excited about it. Most of us in this room have a car, fair bet, yeah, two cars, right, all in our driveway. It, it's, it'd be amazing to help you with that and be a part of that, and so yeah, we want to be a part of that yeah. and, and help you get that car to help the gospel going out. 
Thank you for giving this week to our kids. Thank you for giving to our church and to sharing the vision of how does God reach the world. Yeah. He does it through you. He does it through me. He does it through missionaries that are sent out. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And so I want to pray um, and pray with me as we pray for Adriana and her team. Lord Jesus, thank you that your heart is for the whole world. Lord, we're celebrating this week the, how the good news of the gospel went out to our kids here in our church, in our community. But Lord, thank you that people living in Thailand and Laos and Myanmar, Burma, Lord, they, they need to hear the gospel too. But how can they hear unless somebody is sent and preach and share the truth of your word? So thank you for Adriana. I pray, Lord, you would raise up all of the support that she needs financially, Lord, friendship, prayers, people that would even be part of, come part of her team from a distance. Lord, thank you that your heart is for the nations. We send her out with excitement. Thank you for the investment she's made in our church this week. Thank you for what you're doing in her and through her, and we pray blessings upon her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. You thank bet. You. Awesome. All right, kids are going to come and sing another song in just a second. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, here's, here's another fun thing. I, I just thought about this. As Adrian and, I had lunch, uh, Adrian and I had lunch this week, one of the things I asked her along with a, you know, some finances and some prayer, anything else that would be helpful to you? And she said, you know what would be helpful? I would just love to get a letter every once in a while from what's going on back home. And so she's got her address and she's got her contact information. Maybe as a church, we could even commit to saying maybe just one time, you know, if a bunch of us did that and said, I'm just willing to write a letter and stay connected, that's an amazing encouragement to her. But stop by her table, talk to her, be part of her support team and hear that and hear what she's got going on and jump on. So before the kids come and before we finish our time together this morning, I want to just remind you, God invites us to live with the heart of a child. Again, what they've done this week and what the team of volunteers have done around them is not difficult. Each one of us can do that every day to listen to God and to worship him. It may not have this amazing set in your house or on your deck or in the quiet place, but you do have the opportunity to stop and listen to God and to worship him to hide God's word in your heart. There were multiple kids who stood up here and they memorized scripture this week. When was the last time you and I memorized scripture? Maybe we start with some of these very verses that the kids learned. They had a good time together. They laughed, they enjoyed fellowship. We were meant to live in community. And so let's do that. Let's reach out to each other and live in community, and enjoy being together as the church. And finally, they're living it out. They've got the motions down. They're thinking about how great God is, and he's powerful. You and I need to live it out, not compartmentalize as adults. I know it in my head, but it has nothing to do with my life. But to simply pray, God, help me to remember this week that you love me no matter what that you are with me everywhere, that you are in charge and you're stronger than anything and that you are surprising. What if you and I lived with those truths this week? What difference would that make in your life and my life? Maybe all the difference in the world. Kids, come and sing for us that last song that you want to share with us. Before we do that song, I would like, um, my mom did all this amazing work, and so us kids would like to give this to her. Thanks, bud. All right, so we're going to end with one song. One of the things that I really, really loved about this week is that we sing a lot of songs that are familiar even to me. So How Great Is Our God and Great Is Thy Faithfulness that we sang at the beginning was something they learned this week. And I think 
I talked to several of our volunteers this week, and our favorite moments were the moments where we looked out and the kids were just praising God at the top of their lungs. Several times I teared up just watching kids just raising their hands in worship. No, no hindrance, no worrying about what the people around them were thinking, just expressing like this pure joy of worship. And so that's why I wanted to end with this song, because this song, I want you guys to join us. I'm going to invite you to stand. And it, it repeats a lot, so you'll catch on. But the song just says, every praise to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. So you guys ready to lead them? You're going to take my job, okay? And you're going to lead them in the song that you guys learned, all right? Okay, here we go. Calling all the worshipers. Calling all the praisers. I want everyone around the world to put your hands together right now because God and God alone is worthy of our praise. Amen. Here we go. Every praise. Yep, hang on just a second. So as we go from here, just want to invite you to have a fantastic week, remembering that very thing that every praise is where? To our God, right? Not to us, not to our world, not to even the accomplishments around us, but to our God. I also want to invite you to just stay plugged in here. Next week, we start outside. We start our summer series in the park. We'll be having one service all summer. We're studying the parables of Jesus. And so I want to invite you to come and plan on continuing to do the very thing we're doing this morning. And that is worshiping God, learning from his word, and applying it to our lives, and then continuing to share that truth. Not just with kids, not just in Thailand, but in your home, in your neighborhood, 
in your friendships, right? The good news of the gospel is for everyone. What a fantastic opportunity our kids had this week to take that in, to learn about the monumental love of God. But that's for each of us. So plan to be a part of it all summer long. Also want to just give a shout out to Charlie. Charlie is at camp with our teenagers. They get back tomorrow. So as you think about him today, if you've ever been to camp, you know the last day of camp is awesome. It's also challenging. And then we have, I think, one more picture, that classic youth pastor pic. There it is, right there, right? That's Charlie having a great time with our students who will come back tomorrow. Let me pray for us, and then we'll proceed from here. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are a great and awesome God. Thank you that you are mighty. Thank you that you are stronger. Thank you that you are everywhere, and thank you that you love us no matter what. Thank you for what our kids have learned this week. May we as adults embrace that same thing. May your praise be upon our hearts and our mouths. Lord, we want to see the truth of Jesus ring out in our church, our community, and around the world. We love you and thank you for the opportunity to be together this morning. And it's in Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. Amen.